a beautiful place and the weather can be gorgeous. The weather is going to play a big part, big role in whether we succeed or not. But just as quickly it can be blowing at 40, 50 knots, it could be sleeting, it could be raining and the visibility could be nil. So these are all things we may have to contend with. The two superstars on the trip are Peter Hillary and Jomling Tenzing Norgay, the sons of the two first people to ever summit Mount Everest. To think it all started with rain and King Harkin Harbour. We could have got very wet. We weren't very optimistic at all. It was pretty miserable feeling very wet, but as we climbed up... The clouds parted, the wind died off, I think it's the best weather I've ever had on the crossing. We're just taking our time, enjoying the views. Ah, uh, view's amazing, isn't it? We now see a whole new set of mountains and they're all spectacular. Following the steps of Shackleton, and here we are inching towards our goal. We had actually unstable snow conditions, avalanche conditions, and we moved very cautiously with ropes and all our equipment. The slope is quite steep and there are some big crevasses in it, so uh, travelling down on snowshoes was a little tricky. And then out in the middle of the cream, we pitched camp. It's been an absolutely amazing experience. Stunning night with lenticular clouds up above the peaks. And there we were, a team, uh, in our little tents, cosy and with hot food. It really was a very convivial evening. We had a very positive team. Everyone helped out and we were soon inside the tents having hot tea. The optimism is amazing. Feeling of camaraderie, you know, amongst uh, all of us on this uh, on this team. Uh, really thinking about what Ernest was going through at the time that he was here, and uh, so I, we feel good. We feel good. Really, the best thing you would want to see on an expedition like this, it was the National Geographic Orion, with its restaurant and its comfortable rooms, and we were thrilled to get down there and rejoin the ship. A sense of accomplishment, but also a sense of respect and, and, and honoring a, a, a man who did far more than we did. Coming here to see the places that Shackleton saw and to experience the climate that he experienced and to be able to walk the walk that he walked, that has been a high point for us. I think a spirit of endurance and optimism and positivity that prevailed in Shackleton's team, I think I'll take that away with me and make sure that it guides me for the rest of We're in Fortuna Bay. We got up super early to hike Lake Shackleton. Apparently there's a big hill and then kind of a saddle and then a hill and it's going to be fun. Let's have fun. Let's get to the other side. Fantastic day to be doing the uh, Shackleton hike. We are on the footsteps of uh, what Shackleton and his men did. They came across uh, from that side of the island and realized they were on the wrong side, had to up climb a little bit more and uh, cross a glacier to get to the point where we are. We're retracing the last six kilometers of part of Shackleton's trip down into Stromness. It's a very hard walk. The first probably two kilometers is constantly uphill, across shale, through some soft, mossy ground. The group's really stretched out. I'm not the world's fittest person, but I could do it. And fairly close from here, they could hear the whistle of uh, Stromness station and they realize they were in the right place. And uh, that was the first uh, human sound they hear in the last two years of their expedition. Uh, spectacular, it's just beautiful. I can't imagine what it would be like to do this in May, but I've done it. 
it's it's great. That what a sight, yeah I know, to come down <laughs> after all that walk and getting yeah. wet and <laughs> and going the wrong way. <laughs> going the wrong way. Wow, look at that. So it's a great way to stretch our legs. The group is having a lot of fun and uh, weather like this is not regular in South Georgia. It's our third day with this type of thing, so we're taking the best advantage of that. Well, we've just finished the uh, Shackleton Trek across from King Hawken Bay over here to Stromness. The two superstars on the trip are Peter Hillary and Jamalin Tenzig Norgay, the sons of the two first people to ever summit Mount Everest. And um, we're about to go live on Facebook to talk to all of the folks out there that I've got questions for us. You know, what our fathers did, what uh, Shackleton did, you know. I truly believe they were great explorers. I can imagine uh, Shackleton doing the crossing of the South Georgia Island, the exact same thing what we did, you know, we retraced his footsteps. They had nothing, no equipment, nothing. They had tweed jackets, you know, a lot of wool, uh, very heavy materials, you know, I don't know how they did it. I think the important thing about Ernest Shackleton and what he accomplished is clearly not his capacity to get to the South Pole because in some ways Shackleton never got to any of his great objectives. But when he got into duress, when he had tragedy and difficulties, such as his ship sinking, and a whole lot of men who were really desperate, he led them in the most extraordinary way. He maintained the camaraderie, the levels of responsibility and discipline, and he got all of them out of there. And I think that's one of the reasons why Shackleton is so famous today, for how he extracted that team. He maintained the camaraderie, and he got those guys out of there. And that's really what we're celebrating. We've traveled quite a long way in the wake of Sir Ernest Shackleton. Think back to even before we were at uh, Elephant Island, we passed very close to Hope Bay, which is one of the many places that they had hoped perhaps they could go ashore. Before they got to Elephant Island, we actually landed two places on Elephant Island, leaving uh, Point Wild following in the footsteps, uh, or the wake, I should say, of the James Caird. We went into Fortuna, Stromness, and here we are. This is a quotation from Sir Raymond Priestley, who was a geologist both with Shackleton and with Falcon Scott in the uh, in Antarctic expeditions and I think this says says it all for scientific discovery give me Scott for speed and efficiency of travel give me Amundsen but when you're in a hopeless situation when you are seeing no way out get down on your knees and pray for Shackleton here's to the boss here to Gritviken, specifically to the Whaler Cemetery, to pay homage to one of the giants of polar exploration. And this is the final resting place of the mortal remains of Sir Ernest Shackleton. And it's uh, very appropriate to, for us to come here because we've been discussing his exploits, his life, and what he and his men went through for survival 1914 to 1916. You know, we all know the story, and uh, I think it's very appropriate also for him to be buried here, a place that he loved. So we always like to come here whenever possible to pay tribute and even maybe drink a toast to the boss. On the back of this headstone is his favorite quote from Robert Browning. I hold that a man should strive to the uttermost for his life set prize. Wow. Doesn't that describe him? When we think about what he endured and accomplished, we thought it'd be appropriate to drink a toast to the boss himself, Sir Ernest Shackleton. The boss. And a little bit for the boss. Oh, when I first read the story, I was amazed. It was one of the most incredible 
true stories, I think, of all time. It's, it's very inspiring uh, to me, and you know, there were so many great leaders on that trip, uh, and, and in terms of leadership, I'm very inspired in my work by uh, Shackleton and Wilde and Tom Crean, and they're just amazing to me. Amazing story of this remarkable man. It's amazing to think about the, the perseverance and the, the fortitude of Shackleton and all his guys uh, just to, to, to never quitting and looking for the next step and moving forward with confidence. It's just uh, humbling and awe-inspiring all at the same time. You could say he inspires people to endure, to take chances. So many years after the fact, he's still you know, an inspiration to all of us. Well, I'm really excited right now because we're actually in the, at the far end of King Harkon Bay on the south side of South Georgia, having just arrived after two quite rock and rolly days at sea. This is the spot, this is the spot here where the, the Shackleton team managed to get ashore. This, this beach is the place, the very place where they pulled up the James Caird, exhausted. And the bluff behind me here was the very place where they got the, the James Caird up above the water line and managed to get a good meal inside them. We rarely come here, so it's a real privilege to be here today. You know, it's really a unique experience to be standing in the very place that Shackleton and his people stood. You know, it, it's such an inspiration to all of our people, and particularly our young people, to know that there is such heroism and, and strength of care. It's, just, it's, it's a message for, the, for all time. So this is, this is just real history. History in the flesh, in the ground here. And for us to be able to share in that is something really, really special. I was really excited to do this walk on this amazing glacier by the Shackleton waterfall and then go see Stromness because I have followed Shackleton's adventure and his heroics, his courage, and his commitment to his men has really inspired me. Because in today's world we need men and women who are strong and who are committed to a goal and who are committed to doing something even bigger than them and that's what I feel like Shackleton did. I spent some time at his graveside just thinking about the man. Yes, thinking about his achievements, which were amazing and they're in history book. And it's been a joy to follow his adventures on this wonderful trip to Antarctica. I've been so inspired. And this entire journey has really taken my breath away. And I hope to go back to Dallas with a renewed vigor and inspiration to be, to do things that are even bigger than myself and to hopefully be a role model for others as Shackleton has been for me. We're right now at Elephant Island where Uncle Hubert, as you will, and tw 21 others camped for four months. It was occupied in the uh, 19... 16 by the party from Endurance where it was after it was crushed. I'm Janice Howard. I am the great niece of Hubert Hudson who was a navigator on Shackleton's expedition down to Antarctica in 1914. I, ne I never knew this man, but it was just a, a, an ex incredible sense of pride for what he accomplished coming here and and I was really touched to have come back here. 
I thought how cool it would be if I was to retrace my great uncle's footsteps on the 100th anniversary of when he came down to Antarctica. We were just fortunate to take Zodiac so we could navigate around the point and, and see it from all different angles. The, the point itself uh, is, is virtually now got no beach at all. How, how they actually stayed on there is quite beyond me. It's the, the last place on earth that you'd want to live. It is no man's land. Nothing lives here except for marine animals. Uh, generally the islands uh, mean that there's some upwelling of the currents all along the coast and uh, that brings nutrients to the surface which feed the krill and then you get the whales as today we saw this wonderful display of, of fin whales all along the coast here as we were coming away as far as the eye could see we could see great big blows from fin whales against the, the low sun angle it's quite spectacular actually i've never seen so many fin whales anywhere before